NBA 2K19 tutorial number 8. Today I'll be breaking down the defensive settings, all of them, to you guys in detail. I'll be also showing you how to create a lockdown defender focus system for you to use online, offline, and against your friends. There will also be a detailed film review on how to best execute yourself to maximize the returns you get from using the defensive settings intelligently. So I also make sure to check out tutorial number 9 when it comes out because this is part 1 of me breaking down all the settings and with a system. In tutorial 9, I will also go into more of the settings and also to showcase you a different system. Defensive settings are pretty robust and complicated this year so it's going to take me to tutorials but today let's look at this one with a focus on a lockdown defender. And also please review if you want to review on all of my tutorials previously or in the future in my homepage through my all 2k19 tutorial playlist and for those of you asking my twitter handle is right there as you can see it's at samfam20 so as you guys have experienced 2k19 off ball actions by the offense is very deadly either against the ai or against another human opponent if they're running any kind of sets that comes with an off ball action you're gonna need settings to shut it down just like that. Also, talented handlers throughout the entirety of the game on my team, online, or even on play now, uh, makes pick and roll very difficult to defend. So you're gonna need settings just as I have used there to maximize your ability to slow them down. And with the right defensive settings, you can actually now tailor make system that suits your roster. And in this case, as you have seen, I am the Toronto Raptors and playing through, or defending a system through Kawhi has netted me a lot of benefits. So please make sure you watch tutorial number nine after this one, after number eight here, for more settings plus a different system because you know, not everybody has a Kawhi Leonard. But right now, I am gonna break down every little setting to you and also showcase how you can make sure you tailor make it to a defender you like on your team. Doesn't have to be Kawhi, it could be Robertson or Depot or things like that. So, let's take a detailed look at defensive settings and how to tailor them to your needs. Now, make sure you first thing, you go to coach settings and turn team communication onto offense and defense so you can see some prompts. And as you guys know, this matchup is based on me as the Raptors and the Hall of Fame Celtics which is probably one of the best teams in the game that runs many, many beautiful sets. So this is a good test for us. So first things first, make sure you go to your settings and turn extend pressure, which is actually a full court press. Just set that to no to everyone because it's not beneficial to full court press anyone unless you have the right defender. But you actually have to go R1, L1 to go through every single player to make sure you turn extend pressure off because you can't do it generally at the uh, coach screen. So every single player has to be no. And so let's take a look. So in terms of screen help rows and drive help rows, make sure you set those to help and no rotation. What that means is that it means the initial man will come over to help either in a pick and roll action against the roller or in a very simple drive situation where the initial the ball defender is being blown by, uh, blown by and someone needs to come over and help. But with help and no rotation in both situations, what's going to happen is no one is going to help the helper. And in 2K, you want that because you don't want to give up open freeze. Take a look at this clip. So Jonas here, Valentunas, is the initial help man. And you can see Kyrie is about to blow by my lorry. So Jonas comes over to help because there's help and no rotation. But no one is going to come over to help Jonas' this guy. So Al Holford is going to be wide open. But in the world of 2K, that's good enough because you don't want to give up open freeze in any mode. So help and no rotation to both. Now, in terms of a pre-rotate, just make sure that's set to no because if you set that to yes, what it does is it gives you that overload defense and that's outdated. That's kind of in the Thibodeau to like mid-2000 Blues era. You don't want to do that. So set that to no. But what's important is you want to change switch rules to switch guards. What this does is, is just as it says, the defense will switch assignments on every guard to guard off-ball screen. That means any screen that is involving a point guard or shooting guard in an off-ball situation, they will switch it. And that's really beneficial because in those kind of screens, you should always switch them so you don't give offense an advantage when they run point guard, shooting guard screens. Now, uh, let's look at off-ball screen first before post. So in the off-ball screen, you can see I have set it to go over, which is what I suggest you do. But if you read the instructions, it says the off-ball defender will go over the ball screen. So you must be like, well, that's a contradiction to the switch rules because the switch rule says the guards are going to switch every off-ball screen. But here, you have set it to go over so what does that mean well don't worry this is because uh, the go over ball screen is going to apply to everybody else except the guards so yes switch rules overrides this so even if a so even if you set it to go over on off ball screen as a point guard and shooting guard off ball screen happens by the offense that you're defending 
uh, your players are still going to switch because your switch rules are so. Switch rules override off ball screen. So you can take a look at these clips. The Celtics are about to run a guard to guard off ball action here. Kyrie is about to go pin off uh, Kyle Lowry uh, on Jalen Brown. So Lowry starts off on Brown here because I have green on Kyrie. And you can see uh, Lowry and green switches as ordered by switch rules. But now Horford is coming up again to set another screen for Kyrie on uh, Lowry. And because that's, that's an action between point guard and center, Lowry is told he's not going to switch with Jonas. He's not told to do that. He's told to go over. So you can see Lowry is doing all he can to get over the screen. So that's perfect. We switched the first one because it's guard to guard. But in the second one, between Horford and Kyrie, we didn't switch because that's because between point guard and center. That's solid defense. And like I said, uh, the post defense always make sure you set it to three quarters bottom and nothing else. Because this is the best one that gives you help side on the baseline and it also allows you to poke some passes if they try to force an entry pass. Anything else is going to actually force you to be in pretty bad help position in terms of your pick. So make sure it's three quarter bottoms for everybody. I guarantee that will help your defense a ton. And now uh, you can see in terms of the stay attached, just set that to automatic. And now uh, we can take a look at the uh, on-ball screen center here and the hedge for center. So the center essentially means, uh, on-ball screen center means what the on-ball defender is going to do if the center, opposing center, comes up to set a pick. And hedge center obviously means what the hedge defender is going to do when he's defending a center who happens to be setting a pick. Now I have set it to go under and catch hedge here. And if you take a look again later in the other uh, pick and roll settings for so on ball screen and hedge, this time without the bracket center. So this just means everybody else, right? So a uh, power forward, point guard, uh, point guard, small forward, doesn't matter. So in this case, I've also set it to go under and catch hedge. And catch hedge pretty much just means the hedge man will drop and contain the drive along with preventing the screener from getting behind him. So if you look at the diagram on the right there, so essentially catch hedge what it does is it gives up mid-range jumpers but it contains the drive and at the same time it stops the roll but it gives up jumpers. But you must be like, Sam, that's crazy. Why would you do go under and catch hedge for everybody? That doesn't apply to some players. Right, I get that, it doesn't. But you want to set it here in the coaching screen because this applies to everybody else. And majority of the time, you just need to do go, you only need to do under and catch hedge on most of the opposing team. So set it here for now, but make your specific changes later. So that's why I have set it like that. Go under and catch hedge for on ball screen and on ball screen centers and hedge and hedge center just to you know make it faster to set up later. But let's take a look at what go under and catch hedge does look like. So here is a uh, Rosier, who is not a very good shooter, and under and catch has just pretty much it looks like this. You're giving the guy a shot. So you can see uh, here the center is already doing catch has, he's all the way down, and uh, Lowry is going way under, so Jonas is down there, and we're essentially begging Rosier to take a shot. That's what go under and catch has does. We want him to take a shot, and he takes a shot. So a three pointer or a pull up doesn't matter. We just want him to take that shot, and it worked out. But like I said, against someone like Kyrie, you gotta make the change. So you can see I have made the changes here specifically on Kyrie's screen by tapping R1 to switch the players on defensive setting screens. And for Kyrie, someone like Kyrie, I suggest you do go over for the on-ball screen for either center or non-center. And for the hedge, uh, for center and non-center again, make sure you set it to soft hedge. So what soft hedge is, it means the hedge man is gonna step out to prevent the ball carrier from turning the corner. And obviously the on-board defender is going to go over. So if you look at the diagram to the right again, so the, it, the soft edge is good to contain the drive by the handler, but the bad thing is uh, he just slows him down and he doesn't stop him. And most importantly, it's going to give up the roll. So let's take a look at a clip on this exactly what this looked like uh, over and soft edge. Essentially, you're going to take out the handler. But you're also not going to give up the fade to the screener, but you give up the roll. But the key is you are going to take out the handle. So watch here, Kawhi is supposed to go over, but Horford set such a nice screen that Kawhi was not able to do so. But that's okay, because Ibaka is about to soft hedge. And he's, you're going to see he's going to contain Kyrie for just a little bit until uh, Kawhi comes back. You see, look at Ibaka right there. He just kind of contains Kyrie on that initial turn, so he can't turn on Horford's hip. But once Kyrie gets past that initial level, Ibaka is not going to follow him. You have to have Kawhi come back manually. So I suggest you always, in a pick and roll setting, always control the ball defender yourself because the hedge defense by the AI is very nice this year. So you can see Ibaka has done his job. He stopped Kyrie from turning uh, parallel to Horford's hip. He's making Kyrie go wider. So now it's up to me to recover as Kawhi. 
which I'm trying as best as I can because I couldn't go over, but I did go under. And now you can see Ibaka takes away the fade, but he did give up the roll, but Hoffa didn't roll here, so this is perfect. We stopped the fade, we contained Kairi enough, and he forces him to take a very contested layup as Kawhi was able to recover on him because Ibaka's soft head slowed him down. So, in some in the case, so someone like Gordon Hayward, you gotta switch it up again. Obviously, you wouldn't want to go under on Gordon Hayward because this is a man who can likely pull up for three pointers. He's good at that. But for the hedge, you don't need soft hedge. Why? Because Gordon Hayward is not fast enough to turn the corner. You're not afraid of him like a Kyrie, and he's not gonna turn off the screen. Turn away from the screen and pull up off the dribble very quickly. Even if he can pull up on the dribble in a three-pointer, it's not going to be that fast. But he likes to drive and Gordon Hayward can finish inside strong. That's why you want to set the hedge defense for both into catch hedge, where previously, as you saw, the hedge defender is going to drop back, take away the roll, give up the fade, but take away the drive and strong finish by Gordon Hayward. So let's take a look at the, at the clip. So essentially over and catch hedge means you're going to give up no drive, no free, but you're going to give up the mid and you're going to give up a fade to the screener. So you see here, Kawhi is supposed to go over and I'm controlling him myself and I have takeover on, which is nice. So I go over the screen completely because Kawhi is good and I did the good footwork. And you can see Jonas is just playing catch hatch. So he stops the roll, but because Kawhi was able to go over the screen, everything gets shut down. That's why you kind of want to rely on the go over catch hatch because if you have a good defender, he's going to go over the screen and he will likely shut everything down for you, just like Kawhi did there. And like I said, everybody else on the Celtics is not really a pick and roll, high quality pick and roll threat. So going under and catch hedge on someone like Jalen Brown, Tatum, uh, Rosier, Ujale, it's perfect. That's why you want to set it to go under and catch hedge for mostly everybody in the pick and roll setting, except the more talented handlers, right? So in terms of on ball and off ball pressure, initially at the coach part, just set it to moderate for everybody because majority of the time everybody's going to be moderate. Moderate just means the on ball defender is just going to be out of reach when guarding the ball handler, so he's going to back up a little bit to give up a pull up. And the off ball settings are moderate, just means he's far enough to uh, kind of play the passing lane, but at the same time he will also be the first defender to come over in an off ball situation. The moderate defender is going to come over to help, right? So set that to mostly for everybody else. But Players like uh, Kyrie or anybody that can shoot really don't and make sure you set force direction to baseline for everybody because that's just going to give you the best defense that's just how 2k is force direction baseline for everyone and obviously someone like Kyrie who can shoot freeze and mid-range put them on tight so anyone I say who has above 80 free pointer on open put it on tight on off ball anything lower than that moderate and anybody who is a really good handler that can pull up like Kyrie set it on tight but if they can't you can pop on board pressure, I mean, you can probably set it to moderate if you really want. And someone like Tatum, that's up to you. If they get hot, you can set them to tight on on board pressure. Off board pressure has to be tight on Tatum because he can shoot freeze. But on board pressure, I'm just telling you, start off tight, but you can go moderate if they're not really pulling up on you. If they are pulling up on you, you gotta go on board pressure to tight. Alright, so one thing you gotta understand though. You can see on the right side there, I have set tight off-ball defense for all three of those guys. So Tatum, Hayward, Brown are all on tight defense. And you can see, even though Kyrie is driving hard on a Lowry here, when you set defenders to tight off-ball, they don't help on strong side. So I got three guys on strong side, and this is not right, but I'm just showing you. that Nobody is helping, so you need to understand. If you set it to tight off-ball defense, even if they're on strong side, they're not going to come down and help you. So that's something you have to consider yourself. And in terms of the centers, uh, this is by me. I always suggest that both on ball pressure and off ball pressure, as long as they're centered, set it to moderate. Even if they can shoot, I don't care. Because you're going to need the help from the centers and them to play you know, good rotation defense. So always set it to moderate for any centers that you're facing against. Unless, it's a, unless they get really hard on free, you can set it to tight. Otherwise, moderate for centers. Or obviously, for power forwards who cannot shoot, also set it to moderate off ball. So you can get as much big man help as possible, right? So you can see here the Celtics are running an action and you can see the off-ball pressure is going to pay off for me. So anyways, on the left, Kyrie setting a screen uh, this time on green and green's going to switch because we got switch rules to guards. Uh, Ibaka is doing a good job. Horford is setting another screen on Lowry which he's supposed to go over as you guys already know. Green recovers on Brown, Kyrie forces a drive. The tight defense on the right side, no one's going to come over but who is going to come over is Jonas Valanciunas because he's on help and no rotation and Horford is being guarded by moderate off ball. So Jonas comes over as set up by the settings and blocks it. So that's excellent defense with excellent settings all paying off together.
So in the case of this kind of system, obviously you want to put Kawhi, your best defender, on the other team's highest user tra player, Kyrie. And if you set the, your defensive settings to the ones I've set, and you put your best defensive player on their biggest offensive threat, and you're always locking up no matter what, you're always guarding them. Even if he goes off ball, use Kawhi to guard Kyrie, you're going to force them into tough isolation shots because everybody's on tight, no one's going to come over to help, right? So if you can shut down Kyrie, you'll be able to slow down their defense and with good defense, you're always gonna get easy transition offense, throw down by Mr. Leonard. And over time, as the game goes, this is gonna favor you. You're gonna grind your way back. And you can see I got Kawhi on Kyrie again. Excellent defense by him. Always do this yourself, that's the system. So here you can see I didn't go over. Excellent soft hedge by Surge. Kawhi recovers. Everybody's on tight, so no kick out. We'll be able to force a one-on-one -on -one matchup, which favors us. And once again, good defense leads to easy offense. So the key about this whole thing is you don't use the wrong matchup and don't like not properly utilize the best defender. So here I purposely put green on Irving, which I know he's gonna kill him. But I'm just trying to show you because Kyrie is high usage. You need the elite defender on him in the system. If you put someone like green on him, he's gonna get switched around. And look at Lowry, there, who's playing decent defense, but because Kyrie is so good, that's not enough. You can see it again in this instance. I have uh, green on Kyrie. And you can see Green's not going to switch this right because I told him to go over the screen. So he goes over it and he's not doing too bad, but it's Kyrie. Just that, and this is also Hall of Fame. So a little bit of space is going to get you killed. This system demands the defender recovery. And Danny, like I said, he's too slow. He's getting killed because if everybody's trying to go over screens, everybody's on tight, you literally are relying on one guy to lock the other guy up even though he's going to be a little bit behind. You see how Green comes off that screen a little bit behind because it's going over? He is kind of there, but not there enough against someone of Kyrie's caliber. So to maximize the system, you must also guard the threat yourself. So if you understand, I'm going to guard Kyrie. He's the threat. Don't switch to Jonas Vendachunas like I did here. You're going to be green your damn self most of the time. And if they force the screen, you best be Tom Lowry who is guarding Kyrie. Because look at me, I'm not guarding the threat. I'm guarding on off ball with green for no reason. And then I'm going to get killed by the threat, which is Kyrie. Always understand where the threat is coming from and switch to off ball if you have to to guard that threat. Same thing again. You can see they didn't switch the screen this time because uh, Green just got over it. He wasn't pinned off by the screen, so they won't switch. And here, I'm guarding the ball like an idiot again because what's Horford going to do? Pull up? No, but the threat is Kyrie. And I kind of caught on by the end, but I'm still a bit late. But here, I was, I was able to guard the threat myself now. But because Kyrie got hot, I'm paying for my previous mistake here. This is an excellent contest by Green, but because of my previous failures of guarding the threat and using the wrong matchup, I'm paying for it. So with this system, you must anticipate and defend the threat or suffer. So there's clearly two sides of off ball action here. I had to switch to Ananube, but I was too slow. I'm kind of there, but with Hall of Fame or even with a good shooter online, they're going to make you pay because off ball screens are so powerful. So mixture. Make sure you don't do what I did there. I'm just there to show you because that's how bad it gets if you don't put the best guy on the opposing team's best guy and also if you don't focus to guard the opposing threat constantly under this system. The settings are good, but I understand obviously not everybody has Kawhi, but there's also better defenders like Oladipo, Beverly, Robertson, even someone like old like Sephanosha, things like that. But you gotta understand, best defender on the best guy and, but obviously, make sure you watch tutorial on number 9 because that, that one, it will show you kind of more of a team, how to use settings to defend in a team approach and it also defend different other ways with different settings. This is just one way of doing it, right? Just like, you know, how I teach you guys to run offense with different freelances, different money plays. Uh, there's different ways of using defenses here because the settings are so good. So here are the full settings just for your reference. You can take a look at them. And I just want to help you guys understand the settings are so robust and they're actually very reliable they almost always do what you tell them to do that means you can actually tailor many different kinds of defensive settings depending on the roster you have in this case i was trying to showcase a roster that's kind of slow in the middle with someone like Jonas, but with lockdown defender like Kawhi. This is a good system for it. Majority of you would likely have to rely on a system like this, especially if you're doing play now offline and online because you can't fully customize your roster too much. But in tutorial number nine, which is the one after this, that should be out by now or will be out tomorrow if you're watching this like in real time, like this came out today for number eight. Then you'll be able to see how I utilize the settings differently for different lineups. And you can actually expect me to showcase different settings for different lineups and different systems throughout the course of the year. I just decided to do this one first because some of you who play a lot of 2K or watch a lot of basketball, this is a very common way to defend in the NBA and in 
2K in general. Using different types of hedging, different types of on-ball and off-ball defense to you know try to limit the offense and force them to do things they're not comfortable with while relying on an elite defender to shut up to shut down their primary option. A very classic way of playing 2K and there's nothing wrong with it really. Like even when I was trying to show you guys a bad way of doing it with Danny Green, I was still able to, I was still able to slow them down enough. And the moment I switched Kawhi back on the Kyrie, like you guys saw I did earlier, Kawhi absolutely destroyed him, and I was able to you know gain a lead and pull away down the line. So here are the defense. So these are the defense settings you guys have asked for. I understand they're very complicated as always in something like 2K, but it's very well done. It's just the lingo and the quirks and the behaviors takes a lot of film review to understand. This is the first one of the year, so if you're still a little bit confused, uh, I absolutely encourage you to ask questions in the comment section. I try to answer as many comments as I can as you guys have seen. So if you got questions, put it down there and I'm sure other family members, my other subscribers will help you with a nice bunch here. So everybody else, if you're more familiar with these settings and you see someone asking, you know, early learner questions, help them out. Because this is tough, but it's reliable because just as you saw earlier, the soft hedge and over on Kyrie was done beautifully. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be able to shut down everything, but I mean, you're taking away Kyrie's in the, in the setting of going over and soft hedge, you're taking away Kyrie's drive, you're taking away Kyrie's ability to pull up, and you're taking Kyrie's ability to pull up from free or mid or finish at the hole. What, and you're also taking away Horford's ability to fade, which is what he likes to do. Now, what you're going to give up is a Horford roll, but at the end of the day, if you're facing a Kyrie Al Horford pick and roll, and you're only giving up a Horford roll where you're likely going to have a help and no rotation defender come by to bump him a little bit, you're winning, man. Like, you're doing good. You're winning the math war. Because you can't take away everything, but you took away all of the high percentage stuff, leaving them a, you know, low percentage action that they don't really want to use anyways. Take them out of their comfort zone. That's what this system is about. Rely on your best defender to do most of the work for you, but he can because he has the ability to do so. All right, as always, thanks for coming by. Watch out for tutorial number nine tomorrow with a different system. Uh, really enjoying playing the game and obviously hanging out with you guys once again. So if you got any questions asked, I'll try to answer them. And other veteran family members and hardcore subscribers, if you see any questions you can answer, go ahead, help them out. Don't worry about right and wrong. If you're wrong, I'll correct you. But I trust, I, I, I trust the veterans, you guys know what you're doing. So, thanks for coming, and I will see all of you with tutorial number 9 in a different system tomorrow.